Last weekend, they were in St. Petersburg. Like I said, the big story, the return of the Ream. Two wins in a row now, two first-round finishes. Let's say hello to the man who joins us right now via the magic of FaceTime. Alistair Overeem in the park. How are you, Alistair? Uh, not in the park. I'm in my uh, backyard. Wow. Front yard, whatever you want to call it. That's your house? Home in the Netherlands. This is my home, and I'm very happy to be here. Wow, it's Alistair. Been a that I work very good. Just been on focus mode in Denver, but um, yeah, it's great to be back, and it's summer. Summer in Holland is always awesome. Alistair, I got to say, you have a beautiful home from what I can see. I'd love to be, I, I mean, it would be nice if you invited me one of these days. You're always welcome. You know that. Wow. Thank you, Alistair. I appreciate but that. You, listen, you, you never leave those parts. <laughs> you're always there. You, you're afraid. When was, that, when was the last time you were in Holland? Yeah, it's been a while. I was there in... Uh, You've two never even been there, right? No, no, I've been there once. 2012, I backpacked with my friends, and we went all around. It was a crazy time, I must say. A lot of things that we could discuss off-air, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Off-camera. Yes, yes. But this is beautiful, Alistair. Look at you. Family man, you got your kids running. I mean, this is incredible. I'm yeah, so happy for you. Are, uh, where are the kids? Kids are, kids are on the trampoline. I can actually show you guys. Please, um, show me. This is amazing. Be proud, Alistair. Be proud. Oh, I'm very proud. You have no idea. Let me... So this is Grandma, Mama. Hello. Hi. How Grandma. are you? And, uh, this is uh, Sensi. Oh, my gosh. Sensi. So cute. Hello, Sensi. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And this is Jazz. Wow. Jazz, say hello. 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 This is amazing. Yeah. These are all your kids, Alistair? Uh, well, my grandmother's not my kid, but uh, <laughs> it's actually my mother. Okay. Grandmother to my daughter. To my two daughters. I have three, uh, three girls. Amazing. Three daughters. Are, you, are you changing diapers yet or still not yet? Uh, I've done it a couple of times, but it's, uh, I mean, it's great. You got to take pride in what you do, right? But it's, yeah, it's. I'm more of about beating up people, I guess. Yes, I can understand. Gym. Yeah. And you did a great job of doing that on Saturday against Alexi Olenek. Am I accurate, Alistair, in saying the whole thing was like a little bit awkward for you? Like even that hug that you got, like it felt like both of you just wanted to get it over with and, and, and weren't really enjoying it because you like each other and respect each other. I, uh, I really like Alexi. Uh, yeah, but then on the other hand, you know, it's UFC. You 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 know you you don't pick your opponents. It's gonna happen how it's gonna happen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I did feel uh, a li a little bit uh, yeah discomfort. I don't know. You know, it it is it is what it is. It is what it is. You rather fight somebody that you dislike, right? Or be neutral. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Did he say hey, Dan? Can you see what for Dan too? The thing. Back in. Hmm. Uh, yeah, sorry, I got distracted. No, what, yeah, did, what did you continue? say? Can you tell me what you said in English there? I'm curious. No, no, no. My, uh, there was something going on there. So I was like, hey, we got to check that out. <laughs> it looked like it was, it looked like it was breaking or something. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Alistair, did he surprise you early on? He was very aggressive with his, with his attack. Did he surprise you? Well, he came to take me out, uh, you know, make it a dog fight. He's very aggressive. It actually did surprise me, um, because you know usually, usually you're gonna take a little bit of your time, especially in a five rounder, right? Right. It's gonna come blasting. I thought we were friends. No, no, but it is. Yeah, it surprised me somewhat. It, it did. You know, he he started hard, tried to take me out. Uh, I waited the storm and then uh, took him out. I, I feel like the stoppage was a little late. Like they could have, like you wanted them to end it a little earlier. It felt like a few strikes that didn't need to happen there. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But then on the other hand, he is um, um, headlining in his own country. They probably didn't want to take that away from him, and because uh, otherwise it would be a real anti-climax, right? Right. But I did indeed think, okay, he's going down. Just a couple taps. You know, just a couple. To, uh, to get it over with. But then, yeah, it wasn't over with. And I was like, okay, I knew I need to switch it up to, to finish this fight because we are in a fight. It is, yeah, it is, it is a sport, it is a fight, it is, it is real. And um, yeah, it's health, right? Right. Also my health on the line. And those knees, look at those knees. I mean, unbelievable. 
Uh, I just said, I don't know if you know this, Alistair, but I just I just told the people that was your 14th career finish via either kick or knee. Incredible. Yeah, but it's it's it, it's more because you're, you know, people are forgetting the the kickboxing NK1 fights. Oh yeah, I'm talking about just MMA. We cannot, yeah, we can't we can't forget those Fair. kickboxing. I mean, it's a walk out to the to the ring, and and some K1 fights literally had tens of thousands of people attended and sure, sure. millions all over the world. So it's like everything is on the line, right? It's a real fight. Right. You're and right. you're fighting top of the line as well. So we gotta we gotta have those fights in there. This was my 90th fight. 90th. Uh, I I think I, I think I won like 80 percent or something. It's incredible. Also, right. how about this? And this is just UFC. This is just a UFC stat. So don't get mad at me. Highest significant strike accuracy in UFC history. Did you know that? 73.8 percent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I knew I was the most accurate striker. Yes. It's kind of cool. Right? Pretty Just amazing. That. Yeah. I remember, you know, Alistair, pizza, when I was campaigning to have you in the UFC and no one wanted to let everyone said, oh, he's not good enough for the UFC. I was campaigning on your behalf. Do you remember that? When was that? Oh, that was before when you were fighting, you know, Strike Force K1. I was out there on the front line saying Alistair Overeem needs to be in the UFC. I think uh, timing wise, it all played out, right? Yeah. I mean, uh,. Yeah, it is what it is. I think I think timing wise has been good because imagine if I was sooner in the UFC, then all of the fights were already happened and then yeah, it would have been already boring. And now it's still action packed, right? Still got some names left, right. still running for the belt, still going. It's amazing because every time I think like, okay, maybe this is the beginning of the end, then you go back and you go on another winning streak and you're finishing guys in the first round. Do you get that sense too? Like people are starting to doubt you a little bit and then you come up and you go on a run like this. I feel like this has happened now two or three times in your UFC run alone. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been crazy. No, but um, I think, um, you know, switching teams has been great. You know, I, I really feel the chemistry, I really feel the energy with the new team. Um, they have their own ways of, of, of getting me you know, fight ready, mental ready, and I just release connecting, and uh, that's what you're seeing. And soon you're going to be 39 years old, Alistair. How about that? Next month. Thanks for reminding me, Ariel Helwani. <laughs> How old are you, anyway? I'm I'm turning 37. About me. 37, Alistair. <laughs> I remember. Remember way back 30. when you said goodbye 20, hello 30. Now we're almost hello 40, goodbye 30. That's incredible. I know. I know a decade has gone by just like that, right? No, but I have to say, um, it seems that everybody has more longevity these days. Um, you know, better nutrition, better uh, recovery methods in the sense of re uh, uh, rehab and uh, injury prevention. And um, yeah, I think, I think I'm, I'm doing all the right things, I guess. That's why I'm still, uh, still hanging in there. You mentioned after the fight, you really enjoyed your time in St. Petersburg. Why did you like it so much? Well, okay, so for some funny facts. I fought there 17 years ago. That was um, one of my first uh, MMA fights. And then, I don't know, I, I like Russia. I like Russians. I think they're very polite. I think they're, they're, they have great fighters. I think they have beautiful, rich history, beautiful uh, buildings, infrastructure. Um, I didn't, I have to say, I didn't do too much in Russia. I didn't, you know, it is, it is I am there for business. But we did go to a museum, saw a lot of uh, awesome w World War II hardware. Wow. Which was pretty uh, amazing and some, some night stuff and st stuff that I didn't even know about. So, yeah, and, and to me, you know, imagine this. I was in Denver. Denver is high elevation. It's snowy. It's, it's kind of still, it's kind of spring now. But up until a week ago, it was like winter still, cold, snowy. And then fight camp is over. And I'm off to St. Petersburg. F f fight week starts, but to me, I'm seeing my friends, my family. I'm out of work, so to me, that is, it felt great to be there. It felt great to connect with my loved ones. <laughs> She's falling. <laughs> oh no! Is she crying? Oh, come on, come on, mom is that? Oh no! Yeah, she's fine. She's yeah. tough. She's falling all day. All day, every day. <laughs> she's tough like but, her daddy. Um, yeah, clever too. Clever, clever little girl. No, but, but um, it, you know, for me, I was happy to be in fight week. The work has been done. 
training camp was gruesome. It was hard, you know. Uh, so I was happy to be in five week and happy to fight. Okay. Looking forward to my time after him. Come home. So you mentioned afterwards you're interested in that Volkov fight, perhaps a return in September. But it seems like you don't really have your, your, your heart set on one particular guy. Like if that fight happens, it happens. If not, you're open to other things. Is that accurate? I think that's the mindset to have because uh, it's not sure what is going on with him. And then, yeah, I mean, it's not personal. But I was geared to fight him. I would like to have that fight. And otherwise, we'll see what happens. We'll see who else uh, comes up. There's some funny business going on there, Alistair. They, like there was that report that said it was a USADA thing. Then the UFC put out that it was a health reason. Something's going on there. I'm not really quite sure. Do you get that sense as well? I don't know. And I want to reserve judgment. So let's wait. Okay. If not him, is there anyone else that tickles your fancy? Uh, you know, not really. Let's just see what happens. Okay. Now, what are you doing now? You're going on holiday? You're going to spend some time with your family? How are we going to celebrate this? Uh, time with my family. My grandmother's 103, turning 104 in June. Wow. So we got to get, just got to see her, right? My mother's here now. This is actually the first time I'm seeing her in, what is it, two months? I was briefing home two months ago. And what else? Other friends, some friends who are expecting a, a little baby, you got to visit them. You know, everything is put on hold because of these training camps. Sure. Because of prep. So you got to do a, a lot of catching up, do a lot of dinners, a lot of social time. Um, I'll be hitting the gym tomorrow. I just have a lot of energy. I just want to get rid of that. So just enjoying our time off, all out of camp. By the way, how's your brother these days and what's he doing? I haven't heard from him in a while. So he's good. He's, um, one second. He is uh, living in Belgium these days. He's, I think he's teaching. And he's actually okay. I, I don't speak to him that often, I have to say. Oh. But he's, he's doing good. How come you guys don't speak often? Well, I'm in, uh, in the USA, right, in camp. And, of course, we can face them. We would face them sometimes. But, uh, yeah, it's not an everyday thing. Okay. I mean, you get all the two, right? And then, yeah. Sure. Just do your own thing, I guess. Right. Does he talk to you after your fights? Does he give you, oh, I like that you did this, did that, or he kind of stays away? He stays away. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Well, I miss him. You know, he was always great. It was fun when you guys were fighting at the same time, same Why promotion. Why didn't you give him a call? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'm going to have him as the guest right after you, and we could catch up. How about that? <laughs> Alistair, did you see that I posted that old clip of us hey, doing the Dougie? Just one phone call away. Aaron. I know. I don't even know if I have his number. But did you see that I posted that clip of us from nine years ago? I feel like a lot of people didn't even know about that. You see those memories? That was fun. Doogie Woogie or whatever it was. Yes, yeah, so it was fun times, right, that we had? Yeah, yeah, it was good times. Then you were still cool. I don't know what happened after. <laughs> you changed. Yeah, I changed. All right, fair enough. Phase, well, right? Guess what? You haven't changed. You're still kicking butt, Alistair, and I'm very happy for you. Well done. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, as always, for giving us some time. I know you're with your family now, so I really appreciate it. Enjoy the time off, and again, enjoy the victory. Yeah, thanks, Ariel. Talk okay. soon. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, the one and only Alistair Overeem. Very nice, as always. And how about that? I thought he was in a, in a, in a, in a park. He's actually in his house.